Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Asad Yaqub and I am from Lahore, Pakistan. And I'm thankful to you for watching my videos. Uh, now you, people are watching my videos all over Pakistan and all over India in Punjab, Amritsar. I received messages from Haryana, New Delhi as well. So people are watching and in Bangladesh. Uh, after that, Bhutan, Maldives. And I received messages from Sri Lanka as well. So I'm thankful to you in Middle East and elsewhere, wherever you guys are watching my videos and making me more popular. Huh? I'm very, very humble. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a very simple guy, but it's all because of your dedication and the reflection of your dedication is my dedication and we are getting the results of that guys are getting good bands in IELTS because of my videos and I'm making more videos more excitedly you guys are my energy your comments are my energy your likes are my energy that's why don't forget to comment on my video and don't forget to like my videos because I see the likes on the video and I see the views on the videos your views are my energy and then I make more and more and more videos and if there's anybody else who is taking IELTS please introduce me and my videos to that person so that he could also get a good bench score in IELTS right okay the type of questions which we are going to do that is list of headings okay list of headings is another challenging task but it's not going to be challenging anymore because Asad Yaqub has come right yeah, we will challenge IELTS, okay? Uh, in English, that's what we say, uh, just you wait. And those who understand Punjabi, in Indian Punjab, at Pakistani Punjab, we're going to do this, chak de phatte. We're going to do chak de phatte with IELTS, right? Chak de phatte means just you wait. Huh? We will see IELTS and all that, okay? All right, guys. I mean, it's really excitement. Huh? It's real. It's just not artificial. It's not for recording. It's real. This is what Asad Yaqub is this is how Asad Yaqub is I'm showing you that picture of Asad Yaqub okay guys in list of headings what happens they give you around nine headings and then the paragraph is uh, labeled and there are around seven questions so headings are more than the questions if there are seven questions they can be nine or ten headings two to three headings are extra now in this type of question what you need to do you got to skim the paragraph I told you for some questions you need scanning technique for some questions you need skimming technique as well now what you need to do you need to skim the paragraph now when we give a heading to a paragraph what do the writers do they start the paragraph with the topic of that paragraph sometimes they start the paragraph with the explanation and at the end when they conclude the paragraph they conclude and they link it with the topic so you got to see that very thing, that very theme of the paragraph is given in the beginning, in the middle or at the end. So you need to see, I mean, you, when you're reading the paragraph, when you're skimming the paragraph, you should have in this in your mind, you should have this in your mind that what is the theme of this paragraph or what's the clear direction of this paragraph? What does this paragraph say? What does this paragraph specifically talk about? And as you skim, don't forget to underline the clue words. The words that, that give you some thoughts about the paragraph. The words that give direction to your thoughts. Right? So you need to underline those words. And once you underline those words, then you come down to the list of headings. Then again, you look at those words instead of reading the paragraph second time. And then it's going to be clear that this paragraph should have this appropriate heading. Do you know how will it work? I'm going to tell you. Let's start. Okay? So questions are... 28 to 34 and section A. Section A means paragraph A. Now we read paragraph A. Now in this type of questions, don't read the, the headings first. If you read the headings first, you're wasting your time because you will read the headings many times. So first skim the first paragraph. When you come back to go through all the headings, then underline the most important words or the clue words in the headings so that next time you don't need to read all the headings. First time, read all the headings, underline the clue words. Second time, only look at the clue words and then it will take your less time. And remember, in IELTS reading, 
time is the most important thing and if you follow this tip which I've given you about uh, uh, this uh, list of headings it will save you some time as well usually what do the students do they first read all the headings they waste a couple of minutes there then they come back skim the passage uh, skim the paragraph go back and read all the headings again and they don't underline the clue words that's why they read all the headings again and again and again if there are seven questions they read all the headings seven times so you don't need to do that okay all right let's see paragraph a it's written for any animal to travel over 270 kilometer in boston partly across you got to read like oh, no, 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 like that okay you're reading you are understanding but you're not reading it actually word for word across the sand right so they mentioned here across the sand and low bush terrain of kalahari desert is a remarkable achievement now for any animal to cross that distance of 270 kilometer is a remarkable achievement remarkable a remarkable achievement for who for what for the animal right and then they say but to do uh, but to do so in 11 days and without any obvious motivation as this zebra population does is quite extraordinary so this is what they do and this is quite extraordinary now you got to keep in mind the words like extraordinary remarkable achievement because this is the theme of this very passage now let's go back to the list of options you can see the list of options uh, a decrease in zebra population? No. An obstruction on the traditional route? No. An unknown species? No. Some confusing information? No. Staying permanently in the Magdalena? No. Nearly a record in the zebra world? Yes. 270 kilometers and remarkable achievement and all that so this is nearly a record in zebra world now what you need to do in front of question number 28 section a you will write six and you will cross heading number six from the list of options so that it doesn't bother you second time okay very good let's go ahead paragraph b Okay, here it says Hattie Badlam, a researcher, discovered this migration while she was tracking zebra. Now they are going to talk about tracking the zebra, and this is the researcher. And the researcher did that. They, they were uh, searching or they were finding out about the migration of the zebra groups, officially known as harems by the Okavango River. For her, uh, for her PhD, each harem consists of Stalin and Seven and all that stuff. You can just go through it and uh, often gather together. So mainly they're talking about she was tracking zebra groups. All right, she was tracking the zebra groups. Let's see if there is anything about that. Okay, we've been through uh, decreased in the zebra population and obstruction. No unknown species. No, some confusing information. No, staying permanently in the medical. No, nearly a record. It's done. Three different ways of living. No. The original aim of the work. Yes, that's right. Now check there. This they say while she was tracking zebra groups officially known as harems. A researcher discovered this migration while she was tracking zebra groups. Now when they say she was tracking zebra groups, actually that's the original aim of the work. What was the original aim to track the zebra groups? So question number 29 section B, the correct answer is 8 and also cross eight from there now you got to do it very very carefully if you've selected a wrong heading then your two questions will be wrong so be very very careful that's why when you're confused about any other question you can even read the headings you crossed yeah you can change your answer at any point there is no problem next is question number the next question it's about paragraph c let's see this raised the question now now they are concluding the paragraph with the theme of the paragraph this raised up the, they explained the detail and now they are going to link it with the main topic this raised the question why despite a plentiful supply of food and water were the zebras being drawn eastward to the salt pans now why, why did they go there even more difficult to understand was what made six of the groups travel so far but they were unable to understand that why did they travel that much why did they go there while the other five remained by the okavango okay so now we'll keep this information in mind and we see which option is going to be correct a a decrease in zebra population no number two an obstruction on the traditional route no Number three, an unknown species. No, they talk about zebra. Number four, some confusing information. See, why? Why did they come back? Or why did they travel that much? That is basically some confusing information. So for question number 30, section C, the correct answer is four. And when you read the last few lines of the paragraph, 
there you understood yes this is gonna be the right answer so remember if in the beginning there comes explanation it means the heading or the information about heading you will find at the end if in the beginning they start with the topic or with the with the finding of it then it's going to be from the beginning so you cannot say you cannot tell it can be somewhere in the beginning the clue for finding the list of headings it can be somewhere in the middle it can be somewhere at the end now let's go ahead we will read d paragraph d and you got to do it quickly for one question you should give one minute not more than that okay d is one of these went across the migration track now they're telling something interesting that one of these they went across the migration track Though the animals could get round the obstacle, each leg of their journey would now be 200 km longer. Now what happened? Each part of their journey, each leg means each part would be 200 km longer though the animals could get round the obstacle. They got round. Now for example, if this is the obstacle, what did they do? They got round the obstacle. They didn't cross it, they got round the obstacle. Each leg of the journey would uh, now be 200 km longer an impossible distance given the lack of permanent water on the extended route now it was an impossible distance and gave the lack of permanent water on the extended route even today with the fence gone it was taken down in 2004 there is dangerously little drinking water to support the zebras on the return journey to the okwango so they talk about their journey 200 kilometers more they had to travel because of the obstacles and all that now let's see which option is going to be correct for that uh, number one a decrease in the zebra population number two an obstruction on the traditional route <laughs> that's easy guys that's easy it's not that's easy it's with me that's easy huh so an obstruction on the traditional route it's number two for question number 31 section d the correct of the list of heading is the second one hmm? let's go ahead next is paragraph e okay paragraph e as a zebra can live up to 20 years means they're going to talk about their life expectancy the migration must have skipped at least one generation during the 40 or so years so zebra's life is 20 years and the one generation gap they had 40 years or so that the fences were up they had the fences this prompts another question it has always been assumed that the young of social uh, herbivores herbivores are the zebras like zebras learn migratory behavior from their parents now actually the zebras learn migratory behavior from their parents but there was a generation gap of 40 years so how did the latest generation learn when and where to go how did they learn they were confused that there was the 40 years gap one generation and the other generation but still they were doing the same migration how did they learn about that not from their parents who were prevented from migrating so who were actually preventing them from migrating did they follow another species such as elephants uh, we may never know now they talk about another species such as elephant but we don't know whether zebras get this traditional thing from elephants or from other species but we don't know that okay now let's see uh, a decrease in zebra obstruction is done unknown species no this is a distraction because there they said uh, another species but it's not the whole paragraph about confusing information is done staying permanently in that no nearly a record in the zebra but it's done three different ways of living no the original aim of the work no how was the information passed on from one generation to another generation how was the information passed on the whole paragraph is about that that there was a gap of 40 years zebra's average life is 20 years how the information the generation information how did it pass on that's what they were confused about so number nine is the right answer for section e okay let's go ahead i'm enjoying F. It's a long paragraph. So you can just, I mean, you don't need to read all of it in one minute. Even if you want to read all of it, somewhere you can read, somewhere you can overlook. Somewhere you can read, somewhere you can overlook. Somewhere you can read, somewhere you can overlook. And as you read, develop another skill that after reading three to four words of a sentence, you should understand what the sentence is about and then skip that sentence. Again, read three to four words and these three, four words can be in the beginning, in the middle, at the end and skip the sentence. Then somewhere you, you are understanding the thing, they are slow down and read. So you need to develop this skill somewhere you are reading, somewhere you are skipping, reading, skipping, reading, skipping, overlooking, reading, skipping, overlooking, reading, 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 and then you stop where you can make sense and then go back and go through the list of headings and you got to do this process in just 30 to 40 seconds. Okay, let's, let's see. 
Hattie's data points to the conclusion, now Hattie's data's conclusion, that there are several zebra populations adopting different behavior. Now what are those different behavior? The first, now they're going to tell us the first thing. The first, like the vast majority of the Kumbhra zebra, take it easy, spending the entire year by the river. The second group, they told us about the first and the second group, 15,000 to 20,000, strong work. A bit harder, they divide their time between the Megaranana and the final group of zebras in the end. Now, there are three groups. The first, the second, and the final group. That is the third group. So, there are total three groups. Let's see if we have got any heading about there. Okay. Let's see. A, de a decrease in zebra population, no obstruction is done. Unknown species, no. Confusing information is done. Staying permanently, no. Nearly a record in zebra world, no. Three different ways of living. Now, what are those three different ways of living? It's mentioned here. The first, like the vast majority. The second group, it's another way of living. And the final group of zebras, whose numbers are more modest, though yet unknown, must surely be considered as among the animal kingdom's most remarkable athletes. So these are the three groups of zebras, and these are the three groups of zebras, and these are three living styles. So what's the, what's the heading? The heading is three different ways of living. That is going to be the answer for paragraph F. Got it? The first, the second, the final, that means the third one. Okay, we got one more question before we finish. Last is G. It's a short paragraph, so let's see. Endangered species naturally tend to grab the headlines. Endangered species, right? Naturally tend to grab the headlines, so it's refreshing for a relatively abundant animal like the zebra to be the center of attention for once. Now, zebra is not an endangered species. There are plenty of zebras around. That's right. Zebras are a vital part of the food chain. Now, they're saying zebras are the vital part of food chain. Understanding their migration in turn helps us to interpret the movements and all that. And then uh, crucial as that undoubtedly is, believes that hebrews like zebras are key to understanding any ecosystem so if you understand zebras you can understand ecosystem and that's what they are saying okay now they are in abundance that's why they are not on the headlines and all that okay now let's see uh, we've got uh, heading number 10 because we've been through all the headings heading number 10 is why it is important to study zebras because they are the important part of food chain and if you understand zebra you can understand any ecosystem so that is why they are mentioning the importance of uh, studying zebra in paragraph g so the heading is why it is important studying zebras now see two extra headings a decrease in the zebra population this was a distraction remember the extra headings are always the distractions so this is a distraction then the third one an unknown species they wrote unknown species in one line but that was not the whole paragraph so that is a distraction and staying permanently in the Magadika Gadi and all that if you can't read it just overlook the word it's the name of a place so staying permanent that is again a distraction and remember distractions are the traps the, the three headings which are extra, they are distractions and they are the traps. So be careful. These traps are like crocodiles, okay? So you got to save yourselves from these crocodiles of IELTS examiner. Thank you very much for watching this video. I teach IELTS online. If you want to join my online IELTS classes, I am available for that. So you can contact me. My WhatsApp number is given. And if you need uh, IELTS coaching, one-on-one -on -one coaching, because online, I don't play the videos. I teach myself. I mean, you and I, we're going to be face-to-face -face through Skype or through WhatsApp. And I'm going to teach you. So if, if you want to get the further details about my online classes, you can contact me for that. Along with that, I have prepared this IELTS course kit. It's called Easy IELTS Kit. With the help of Easy IELTS Kit, you can prepare yourself for IELTS at home. This kit has eight DVDs and four books. And within the DVDs, I've explained IELTS reading, writing, listening, and speaking. And there are practice tests as well. So you can easily prepare for IELTS while staying at home. 
and I also provide IELTS coaching uh, like IELTS seminars if you want to conduct my seminar in your school college university or if you have some IELTS candidates and they need training a one-day workshop even I can offer you one-day workshop or even one month training anywhere in the world you can contact me and I will come over to train your candidates for IELTS Asad Yaqub wishes you all the best take care Allah Hafiz